got an Audi TT that's got a dead cylinder. You can feel it. Probably even hear it. So, I've just done a code read. Got cylinder 4 detected on misfire. But we've also got a cylinder that's disabled. So that's probably cylinder 4 as well. So we'll do some checks and see what we get. And listen to the engine to see if it sounds like it's compression related. And that's, I don't know if you're picking it up on the video, but that sounds fine on each cylinder. I use this first look sensor. Okay, so it looks like it's okay. Let's just go back on the waveform a bit and see. But they look even. There's not one missing out of it. Every one of them is even. Um, I've got the coil with an extension so I can see what's actually coming out of the coil and I'm watch that better. I'm using a breakout lead set here so I can see the trigger. Keep an eye on the whenever it's triggering it. And I'm also around all of the powers at all the injectors. And I'm gonna see if we start getting a bad coil signal first and then it cuts the injector just to save fuel going down and damaging the cat, if that's the theory. I got it all set up nice. Just double checking they're in the right orders, yeah. Okay, so now I'm ready to set up the scope, start the car and watch it. Let's make that a bit smaller. This has got an upside down current on one of them. So I, I kind of have one of the wires as a ground, like I've gone around the wrong wire, but that's okay because we're still seeing it. And here's the control for the coil, and that's the coil firing. So now it makes more sense. We can look to see when we get a bad signal in the coil. Does it stop one of the injectors? You see the injectors are going even though I'm around one of the wrong wires. So between the two, I'll just show you, between these two points we've still got one, two, three, four. That's just around, that must be around the ground instead of the power on that one. Right, let's keep it playing, because something's happening now. Got the coil pattern. We've lost an injector right there, so I'll stop it. I'm going to see what's going on. A spark plug in the coil to different cylinders, and we're still getting the same thing happen the same cylinders being deactivated. So it's not the plug, it's not the coil, we're getting the control and it's firing. Although you see it's kind of a lean. Let's see if you can see that. I can't see that at all. There. See how it's kind of a lean spike coming up, but it will be because it's not firing on that injector. So, we've definitely found the link. It's not the spark plug and it's not the coil, because they're in different cylinders. See that here? I've got a sink from a coil on plug. You can't even see that. Try and get it so you can see it. These sinks here, very small. There, now it's in focus. So, those small spikes are a coil and plug probe resting on cylinder one coil and plug because we want to look at number four cylinder, the faulty one. So, one cylinder on this engine will be on the exhaust when the other one's 
firing, so doing it this way, we know number one's firing, so number four is on the exhaust. So this way I know that the odd one out with the bigger pulse, every time, well not even every time, but most times, is bang in line with the exhaust stroke because it's in line with cylinder one firing, which is not meaning there's a fault with the exhaust gases, it just means that it's not doing anything on that cylinder. That's all it means. Okay, that's the known bad. The bad one, the faulty cylinder that keeps shutting down. Right? I'll have a little look at that. Now we're going to put it into the one that works okay and compare it. That's the number four cylinder that's faulty. Here's the good cylinder, if you can hear me over the motorbike. It's basically the same, except there's higher compression before we were about 44. And this is a takeover with a closed uh, throttle body. And it, it's, it, like I say, it's running. So we've got quite a bit more pressure here running. So it's definitely, uh, I think it's a compression problem. And it must be noticing that it's not doing a proper combustion, whether it's using the oxygen sensor or what, I don't know, or picking up on the speed of the crankshaft rotation, but eventually it's shutting the injector down, and all we can see is low compression. Same waveform, this time we've added crankcase compression. It looks fairly even. I'm going to move the pulse sensor to the intake and see what happens there. The only time I see a difference is in the exhaust. And I expected that when it's not firing on that cylinder anyway. Ended up doing a relative compression. I didn't do this at the beginning so I wanted to try the pulse sensor in the exhaust and that was kind of misleading because everything was the same. But here we can clearly see one of them smaller. So that's the reason. We know it's cylinder 4 that's long compression and it's deactivating the cylinder. Like I say, whether it's not liking what it sees on the lambda probe, might be that the emissions it's not seeing full combustion, or it might be the speed of the crank or something like that, but after a while of not running right it decides to deactivate the cylinder and it's not the injector. So we've actually, to prove everything, we've moved the spark plug to another cylinder, the coil to another cylinder, and even the injector to another cylinder. And we don't see any pulses that are uneven when we're looking at the intake or on the um, crankcase. That all looks fine. I haven't tried it in the coolant somehow to see if we're losing pressure through there. It's possible. But anyway, it's, it's going to need the cylinder head to come off. And that's the reason for the misfire. It's shutting down the fuel injector based on low compression on one cylinder. I checked it here for the intake and I checked it in the dipstick tube for the crankcase pressure. Now we're checking for pulses in the coolant. I know there's going to be some because of the nature it's got a water pump that's maybe going to cause a slight pulse. I'm taking up a cigarette, um, taking up a uh, treadle of that coil. It was just to know at the same point that one cylinder is doing its thing twice. Now we're going to see the waveform. That one cylinder we can see is fired here and here. And I was looking to see if there's a major pulse somewhere in between the two. That's a regular thing that we would know. It's like one of the cylinders that's low on pressure. If it's losing it into the coolant, there's a couple of areas showing. But we've already seen enough to know low compression. We need to take take it off. The, the intake valves were gunged up, so we can clean them all up at the same time. It might seal better, but the fact is the intake pulse was perfect. We didn't see anything on it as messy as it looked. So in this case, I think that maybe the next thing would be a leak down test to double confirm this, or a sniffer test. But we do seem to have it pulsing a little bit. That might be enough. 
every time that cylinder is on the compression stroke it's going up there may be another cylinder that's slightly bad as well though that's just something I don't know whether that's enough to say take the head off based on that I think we should really do a sniffer test or we've got low compression anyway and it doesn't seem to be coming out of the intake but I, w I would maybe do a leak down test in number four cylinder first okay so at the end of this the pulse for the intake looked the same and the pulse for the um, crankcase lit I mean there was nothing irregular in the pulses for the intake and the crankcase and I went to the coolant side of things and actually after doing that test when I removed the adapter that I used to get the first look pulse sensor connected when I moved the adapter the funnel that was actually part of a smoke machine kit that I've got but when I removed it pressure had built up inside so I'd already known it's pressurizing so it looks like it is a head gasket fault and uh, in addition to that we've done a leak down test and it did prove to be you know, it's, it's a head gasket fault with that one so we do need to take the head off so another thing I, I didn't show you was that the car when you blip the throttle or give it a snap throttle all the cylinders were going up to about 200 psi we're very close when you put the pressure transducer in different cylinders and do it that way and also with a mechanical gauge it's also building up to the same pressure it was just running watching a, you know live running of it at idle it was that's where you seen the difference and that's where the car felt different it seemed to feel okay once you were driving it's just if you let it tick over it started shutting down the cylinder after it didn't run properly on all cylinders so I think in this case I needed the in-cylinder pressure transducer to see where the fault was I think that was the, the key also the relative compression had I have done that first I would have gone in that route straight away but I tried the the pulse sensor in the exhaust maybe I missed something but I didn't see it sounds okay you know cranking it, it just sounds like all the cylinders were okay and with the pulse sensor it also sound it, it looked like there was nothing no one cylinder that was different it was the same pattern each time so in that case I had to just put it down to not being the engine and started looking at other things I also did a test where I had the fuel pressure and the uh, high pressure fuel line because it's um, direct injection petrol or gasoline so I also looked at the pressure sensor for the high pressure rail and I didn't see anything that it stayed level the whole time you know I wasn't any difference in it when I put a sink so I could see if anything was happening in relation to the same cylinder going all the time it, it, there was nothing to see there so in this case it was just low compression not a total dead cylinder it was low compression but I think you would miss it if you just used a regular gauge compression gauge um, but with the relative compression I would have got it but I didn't do that first and I think that's maybe what I'll do next time uh, just go for that even if it sounds okay it wasn't a total dead cylinder so I just purely went by the sound and didn't give it too much time and quickly did the pulse sensor on the exhaust so that was maybe my mistake and put a bit of time on it but it all made for a, a thorough case study that I I know the injector was dropping out and it was the ground side that it was cutting and got a better understanding of how it's how it's working and now I know the only thing I can see wrong with it means the head's got to come off um, I hope this has been helpful to somebody and thanks for watching